Okay, so a healthy diet, fruits, grains, legumes, vegetables. Don't forget vitamin B12. You need that for healthy nerves and healthy blood. Vitamin B12 is something that really everybody needs, but it's made not by animals or plants, it's made by bacteria. And many people really don't get it very much. Meat eaters will get some because the bacteria in a cow's gut will produce it typically. Some of it gets into their meat or their milk. Uh, on a vegan diet, you can't count on that source, but really everyone should supplement vitamin B12. The amount you need is about 2.4 micrograms a day. If you go online, you'll see probably the smallest supplement is about 100 micrograms. That's fine, 100, 200, 500. Uh, all of those are within range. Uh, you probably don't need the huge ones, like 5,000 micrograms a day, unless your doctor specifically tells you to take it. Okay, so by now you might be thinking, I would love to get my hormones in mail. I'd love to get my insulin working right, my sex hormones working right, my thyroid hormone. And we, we have barely scratched the surface. There are many other conditions like menopausal hot flashes that we can tackle with food. But how do I make these diet changes? How do I start? Let me share with you how we do it. We've done this with thousands of people in our research studies and in our medical center, Barnard Medical Center here in Washington. And I've never seen anyone unable to do it. Step one, check out the possibilities. What I mean is take a week, take seven days to check out the possible foods that you might eat if you didn't need animal products anymore. Take a piece of paper and the paper should be marked breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. And you've got a week to check out the possibilities, meaning think about foods that you would eat if you were vegan and write them on the list. Hmm, what would that be? Well, let's see, for breakfast, I normally have um, um, oatmeal with heavy cream on it. I guess I could leave the cream off and put on some cinnamon and raisins. That would work. Um, blueberry pancakes without the butter, that's vegan, isn't it? I have my bran flakes with cow's milk. I guess I could try almond milk. I guess so, I've never tried it. Well, you've got seven days, give it a try. If you like it, write it on your list. On to lunch and dinner. I can have a veggie pizza, pizza with no cheese, sure. I could have a veggie chili. I could have a bean burrito. There are lots of things for you to try. You got seven days, check out the possibilities. If you go out to eat, Italian restaurants have angel hair pasta topped with a vegan arrabbiata sauce. They've got pasta fagioli. They've got beautiful salads and grilled vegetables on the side or Latin American, beans and rice, bean burritos, veggie tacos, veggie fajitas, all kinds of great stuff. A Chinese, they probably got three dozen Rice dishes, tofu dishes, vegetable dishes, all of which are vegan. Or extra points for Japanese because not only are they, do they have many vegan choices, but they also tend to not uh, overdo it with oil, which is an Achilles heel of a lot of restaurant cuisine, unfortunately. So go there and get your veggie sushi or your edamame or whatever it might be, see what you find. Now, fast food is not the pinnacle of culinary art, but you will find that every place from Taco Bell to Subway has vegan options for you. Check them out. If you like them, put them on your list. All right. So after seven days, I've checked out the possibilities. I've got a pretty good list. Now, step two. Now that you've got your list, now that you've checked out the possibilities, step two is take 21 days, three weeks, and go vegan. Eat those foods. That's easy. Because, well, first of all, I could do anything for 21 days. But secondly, I've already made my list. I, in fact, I've got those food. I, I stocked up. I'm ready. Okay, so for the next 21 days, we're gonna eat off our list of healthy foods. For the next 21 days, no animal products at all. Keep oils really low. Be on as close to a perfect diet as humanly possible. And at the end of those 21 days, two things will have happened. First, you're healthier. You're losing weight. You're feeling better. If you have diabetes, your blood sugar has fallen. It might've fallen so far that you actually need to reduce your medicines. If you have diabetes and you're on medicines, tell your doctor or caregiver that you're doing this diet because it's powerful. The second thing that happens is in addition to the physical changes, you're noticing your tastes are changing too. You find that you can live without those meats and things that you thought were essential and you kind of don't crave them anymore and, and you're discovering all kinds of new flavors and new recipes and 
new websites and new programs of all kinds. In fact, you've discovered a whole lot of new friends who are doing the same kind of diet, wondering where you've been all this time. So let that happen. And, and don't do it sort of on Tuesday and Friday. Do it every day for three weeks and it will change your life. We have a number of uh, tools that will make your life easier. One is called uh, the 21 Day Vegan Kickstart. It's an app, it's on your iPhone, it's on your Android and it is free. And it's got menus, recipes, cooking videos in English and in Spanish. We developed it as a patient care tool for our doctors to use and, and they do, but uh, a lot of people are not waiting for a doctor to tell them to use it. You can go, you can go online to 21 Day Vegan Kickstart um, or also just uh, go on your iPhone or your Android, download it, get started. You're gonna love it, it's really cool. And this is my book, Your Body in Balance. Let me encourage you to share this with other people because as I said at the beginning, the old idea does not apply anymore. The old idea was we've got foods that, that, we, that give us disease, that's true, but we need to control things in a more sophisticated way. Part one is all about controlling sex hormones. Everything from improving fertility to dealing with menstrual cramps and tackling menopause. Yes, if you are dealing with hot flashes, run. Do not walk to this hormone controlling program. It is astounding. I'm gonna show you how you can knock out your hot flashes. Uh, part two is all about metabolism and mood. Erectile dysfunction, diabetes, thyroid disease, skin and hair, moodiness and stress. And then in part three, we're gonna talk about what a healthy diet is. I'm gonna walk you into that. It's, it is easy to do, but we're also gonna go further. There are chemicals in some of the things you're eating that you wanna avoid. We'll avoid them too, because some of them can disrupt your hormone activity. Then we'll give you menus and recipes. And I want to tip my hat to Lindsay S. Nixon, who did all of the recipes for your body in balance. And Lindsay did a brilliant job of foods that are delicious, tasty, simple, familiar, um, quick to make. So anyway, have a look. Um, and let me ask you to not just try this yourself. You know, there are a lot of people watching this program right now, a huge number, but the people who need this information the most are not watching this program at all. They never heard of it. Why? Because they're 12 years old and they go to school and at the school, they are told that chicken nuggets are healthy foods or a big cheese pizza with pepperoni all the top. That's healthy, right? That's what they learn. They're told you have to have milk every day. No one tells them that has estrogens in it. No one tells them that there are better alternatives. And they grow up and as they get menstrual pain, they're told, well, that's just a woman's lot in life. And if they develop diabetes, they're told, well, I guess it must just be genetic, isn't it? And when they're having fertility issues and they're told to, they need testing and they need expensive treatments, they're told this is God's will. Stop it. We can't change everything, but there's a lot we can change. Once we learn how the system works, once we learn how hormones control our bodies, and our foods control our hormones, we have power. So let me ask you to learn about this yourself, but more important than that, let me ask you to connect with other people and share what you have learned. They need this information and you've got it. So let's make some noise. And when I say make noise, I mean social media. I mean, Facebook and Instagram and every other way and share this information with other people, share websites, share recipes, share the knowledge, share food, share a meal. Let's do this together. Let's change the world. I wanna say a huge thank you to the organizers of this important program. But most importantly, I wanna thank you. You're a participant in this program and you've spent some time with me today. I'm grateful to you. And uh, let me encourage you to share what you've learned with those you love. Thank you so much.